Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I'm back with the last of the three reels that was put out at the curb as trash that uh, one of my customers actually uh, picked up. And uh, this is the last one we're going to do. This is the Shakespeare. It's the SP400. It seems like the basic Shakespeare reel. Shakespeare does hundreds of thousands of these reels each year. Some are sold on combination. All have different names. Most of them are just uh, uh, economy reels. But it's an entry-level reel, which is what Pure Fishing's designation of this brand is. And uh, I think we can clean this one up, make it work, and in the meantime, we'll show you how it's made. This one was set up at a right-hand drive. That's okay. And uh, we're going to take this apart, and we'll show you how to service a reel like this, even if you don't have the schematic diagrams, and if you don't have the, uh, uh, the knowledge of what this reel is. So before we do that, we're going to remove the exterior parts. We'll do a little bit of a cleaning, and I'll take the time to thank our first responders and essential personnel as I do that. I appreciate all that our local hometown heroes are doing. That includes all the uniform services, fire, police, rescue, um, EMT, first aiders, and all the other folks that are out there, and I don't want to miss any. I apologize if I have. And our local delivery services, teachers, transit workers, and everybody trying to keep us safe during the pandemic. Thank you for all that it is that you do. Well, you noticed that I was spraying some stuff on. I'm using a product called Purple Power. It's a, um, a concentrated degreaser. And the reason I'm doing that is there's just a lot of grease. I'm not sure where these uh, these reels were seated, but uh, just grease. And then the dust settled on the grease. Well, here's a problem that's common. We've got sand on the inside of this. And if you're working on sand, keep it off your bench. So I like to put a paper towel down. Ideally, what I like to do is to not do it on the bench, but of course I'm doing a video here, so it's kind of, I'm kind of stuck with it, doing it that way. But as soon as I get that sand out, I'm going to take the opportunity to fold that paper towel over, and I'm going to wipe it away so that it doesn't spill out on my desk. That's kind of the way that goes. We just used a little bit more there. I'm going to use it to clean the rim. This is a, a pretty substantial degreaser. You can find it in automotive stores. You can find it in your local um, Target or Walmart or the like as well. It's a general purpose cleaner, but understand if you do use it that one of the items or contents in there is lye. So please be careful if you're using it. I use a, a glove to keep most of that stuff off my hands, and uh, I would recommend that you do the same. All right, I'm just looking here. This side case can be removed without removing the rotor, but we've got so much dirt and junk on here that I'm going to go pull the rotor first. So there's a shim washer, the red one, that's going to control the height of the spool and the line wi uh, winding. And then we have a little click ratchet, which is going to tell you when your spool is reversing backwards. You can pull these up. And when I remove the parts, I like to put them right into a parts tray. I use the bottom of a jug for that parts tray. And that enables me to find those parts when it comes time to, to go ahead and redo these. All right, I'm going to take this off. There's a hold screw for that um, rotor nut. And then you need a deep socket. I have a tool here. It's a 12 millimeter tool that can break that socket uh, piece. You don't need the, uh, the 12 millimeter tool. Just grab a deep socket like this and go ahead and use that. And we're going to take this off again. More for cleaning. I did do a test on this. I still don't understand why three reels and poles wind up out in the trash. I do understand the poles because the poles were pretty well beat up. But uh, the reels themselves, it's a shame that the owner didn't take the time to uh, just kind of talk to a local Boy Scout group or Girl Scouts or camp or any of those kinds of things. Take a, take a kid fishing kind of organization, whatever. But uh, the fellow that picked these up asked me if I could just kind of get them back working. And, and quite honestly, for the price of a service and everything, uh, these reels probably are right on the border of why would you do that even. But uh, we wanted to make an example of this for the video, so uh, discount for the uh, using that, if you will. Been a friend of mine, been a longtime customer of mine. I don't mind going the extra bit, and he's always thinking of me. All right, so we've just cleaned up all that um, grease there. 
there's a little bit of grease sitting in the channel here, so I'm going to use a cotton swab where I couldn't get the paper towel before. And it's a dried grease that's attracted a lot of dust. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that as you go to recondition a reel like this, if you find one that's been sitting for a while, you just want to make sure that everything is functioning. So we have a, a bale trip here, and it's a little tight. Admittedly, it's tight. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use some penetrating oil now. I'm going to work that into the side pieces, just like that. And I want to make sure that I can get this to trip nice and easy. If it's not tripping easy, and I mentioned that there was sand up top, if it's not tripping easy, and that means that sand got in here somehow, then what I would do next is I would go ahead and remove these. There's a trip lever that comes down here. You can see it here. And when that passes over a ramp, that ramp is going to push that trip lever up. And as you saw, it's going to flip that bale back. I'm just going to put a little bit of oil into that trip lever just for the facilitation of the slide. It really doesn't need it, but as long as it's there. That's the servicing of the, the rotor component. And you can see we, we still have a whole bunch of that uh, dried grease and the like on here. Now let's get that off. That's why I wanted to take the rotor off. It makes cleaning a whole lot easier. And then we'll remove the case below. What I'm seeing is a single ball bearing, probably. But take a picture here. This is always one of the things that I recommend. If you don't know the reel, take pictures along the way so that you can learn about the reel. And in this case, you'll see we have a dog that's a traditional dog. It's not an infinite anti-reverse. It's going to hook into these little uh, ridges here, that little point, and that's going to stop it from going backwards. It has a, an eccentric spring. If you turn this, you'll notice that the dog is moving in and out. And it does that because of the spring tension that's being pulled there. If you're going to work on a reel like this, you're going to want to notice where that spring goes so that when you go to reinstall it, uh, you get that uh, correct. All right, three side plate screws. Let's take those out. These reels are durable. Shakespeare's been around a long time. Shakespeare as a company was formed in I believe it was around 1898 by William Shakespeare. He didn't, the brand does not take the name from the poet. That's William Shakespeare. I believe he was out of Kalamazoo, Michigan, if I remember. He uh, was a watchmaker turned fishing reel manufacturer. He's credited basically with introducing the level wine uh, bait casting reel to the general public. And uh, his reels are uh, very durable. The, uh, the brand today is owned by Pure Fishing and they continue to make nice products under the Shakespeare name. All right, we have three screws. I laid them on my desk. You may have noticed two of them are long and one is short. You need to note where they came from. I did, and uh, that's where taking a picture helps. All right, the three screws are off. You can take the side plate out. As I suspected, single ball bearing. We have a bushing on this side, and we have a traditional setup. And uh, this traditional setup, I wanted to get this case off because I wanted to make sure that the sand from the top there did not get in the case, and it did not. We have a crosswind block. Behind that is an oscillation gear or a crosswind gear, which moves this up and down. We have a main gear. On the back of that main gear is going to be a, um, a secondary gear, which is going to drive that crosswind gear. We have our pinion gear, and then we have the top load. So let's go ahead and take out the axle shaft, which will enable us to remove the rest of this reel. Remove the screw from the crosswind block. You can pull up on the axle shaft to remove that. You can remove your main gear now. You can remove the crosswind block and gear. And this is the internals of the case. Now, you want to make sure that it's clean, and it is. There's only a little bit of dried grease. We'll get that off right now. Everything else in here is good. So I'm going to take those pieces and put them into my tray. If there's anything to be said about this, this is almost bone dry. Notice we have a brass bushing on this side, or some kind of metal bushing. I'll, I'll call it brass. Uh, but there is a metal bushing for the second side of the case. There's a, a plastic one on the other side, or a Teflon one. And again, if you put these into a parts tray, 
and maybe put them in different corners of the parts tray. You're always going to know where they are. So we're going to do this because we want to get to the bearing and we want to just make sure that everything else is clean inside and of course we've seen it's clean inside. So what I'm almost thinking is this is a reel that comes from uh, generally from a mass merchandiser like a Walmart or Target or the like. And uh, generally the folks that buy their reels there are not going to use these as everyday reels. They're going to use them maybe for a week on vacation. Maybe they're going to use them for a shore house for uh, someone who um, is a visitor and they need an extra rod and reel setup, maybe the cabin or the like. And uh, they usually sit around a while. So most of the time what you'll find if you get these reels used is that they're not really used that much. I mean, you'll, you'll find ones that are broken. <laughs> That's a different story as to why they sit. But for the most part, a used reel in this case usually has minimum use in it. All right, we've got the pinion gear is, is greased up. I'm going to put some oil onto the bearing. You've seated in your pinion gear. Come on back and grab that collar. Notice that there was a flat side. That's always a good place to take a picture because if you didn't notice which side the... Um, the piece came off of. Uh, you might put it on backwards and interfere with the operation of that anti-reverse. Next up then is to put the two tie-down screws in. Now these tie-down screws are metal because I have a magnetic tip. They are steel, they're not stainless steel. And again, that's when you look for a lower price wheel, you say, well, what makes the difference between a uh, a lower end reel or a uh, an economy priced reel in the next level up and a lot of times you'll see what you see on this reel here you've got steel screws rather than stainless steel you have bushings rather than bearings and in some cases your bushing will be a, a plastic bushing or the like as opposed to the more sophisticated uh, metal bushings in this case we got one and one uh, you'll see pot metal as opposed to a brass kind of a thing for the um, the main gears and the like. But that doesn't mean it's a bad reel. That only means that uh, they're using a uh, lesser material, if you will. And that lesser material just means that uh, if you fish it heavy, it has a chance of wearing out sooner than, uh, than maybe one that has more quality materials in it. But then again, you know, it's, it's a pricing thing. And if somebody's buying an occasional reel for an occasional angler, or maybe a beginner's reel or whatever, there's uh, really no reason to spend a lot of money if the thing is only going to be used five or six times over the course of a season. Okay, we've loaded that up. Good time to take it for a spin. It spins nicely. We're going to uh, just grab that set screw now and put that in so we can hold that down. And then we'll go down below. We'll lubricate the pieces that belong in inside the main channel here. I want to check the anti-reverse. Yep, anti-reverse is working. Now we can come down here. All right, so we have the main gear. Just want to clean that up a little bit. There's just a little bit of old grease on there. And again, to find this reel in the trash and the condition that this reel is in is kind of amazing in itself. But I suspect that uh, this could have been anything, right? I mean, if reels could talk. It could be that... Uh, there's a person living in the house and they sold the house and final cleanup, somebody came in and just said, no, oh, I don't need that. Somebody left it in the basement or wherever they may have left it. Uh, out to the trash it goes, right? All right, that's the main gear. We're gonna do the same thing here. This is the cross wind block or oscillation gear. Some people call it one, some call it another. It's, it's the gear that's gonna move the axle shaft up and down by way of the cross wind block. You wanna get grease on every, every of this. When you do that, when you go to install it over the stud, make sure that that stud on the gear is in the low position. You don't even have to clean these, there's nothing inside. So this is evaporated or it uh, just kind of leaked out. This is a good point to, uh, to, to notice how the uh, cross wind block went. It's real easy to put this one in upside down. So if you have a question on that, just make sure you go back and look at your pictures that you took. That's the best answer in this situation. 
You want to mount the stud on the crosswind gear to the stud on the crosswind block. Now we can put our main gear in. I want to make sure that that seats properly. Once you have that in, you can take the axle shaft and just a light coat of grease onto the axle shaft. Don't go a lot because it's going to squeeze out. And then bring it down through the center of the pinion gear and insert it into the slot on the crosswind block like that. Next step then is the little tie down screw that goes in that crosswind block. And for just, I don't know, 20 minutes or so here in terms of the, uh, the effort to uh, clean this reel up, this reel's going to be a nice performer. It's going to do what it was sold to do. Again, I don't want to overemphasize, you know, the number of times that it's expected to go fishing or the particular situation that it may be in, but if you're anything but a daily fishing kind of a person, this should serve fine. Notice that on this um, bushing here, we had a shim washer that goes on the main gear. Then we're going to bring the case over. Nice snap of the case. So the two long ones go on the side here. The short one goes up top in the corner. If you didn't notice that, you'd go back to your pictures and you'd verify that. Manufacturers do that sometimes for there's a space constraint. Uh, sometimes it'll interfere with an internal piece or a part. But uh, just pay attention when you get these reels where they uh, where they belong. This is a good time to tell you if you enjoy these kinds of videos, uh, please subscribe to my channel. I post an awful lot of these, and when I post, I do. Uh, send a message out to the subscribers and that's you get the message if you hit the notification button also if you have a question on this reel or any reel in particular and you'd like to learn more uh, leave that in the comment section I'll be happy to uh, provide you with an answer if I know it and uh, if I don't I'll try to provide you with a direction that you can go all right here's the click ratchet that goes on next And we have that little washer for the spool height adjuster. I'm going to put a little bit of oil into the cap here for the handle. That'll keep that nice and uh, fluid. I'll mount it on the right hand side for now. Most of the reels these days are set up for a left hand on the, on the spinning reel. But if it was on the right, we'll leave it there. And now we'll just go over to the spool and see if there's any, any sand that got underneath there and get it out of the drags if there are. There's a round clip here that rides in a groove in the spool. And I'm expecting to see felt washers in this one. All right, the first one in is felt. And you can see that the felt washers are sticking to the, uh, the regular washers. These, are, these felts are almost like paper. All right, three metals and two means that you get a metal on the bottom of the case to start this. Now you want to take one of these washers and you want to saturate it with oil. You have to keep these flat, uh, lubricated, wet. If you don't, what's going to happen is that they're going to dry out and tear. So this is another place where a manufacturer can save fractions of pennies, I guess, is what they're into terms of manufacturing, but where they can save by not putting in a more expensive washer. But again, if you're fishing with four pound or fishing for four pound or three pound or low end or kind of fish, you really don't need that much drag. Now what we're doing is we're resetting this C clip. And I know it's probably out of uh, camera range there. The uh, that was a pretty tight clip, so it goes in that ring. This goes on just like that. Our newly cleaned drag adjuster button goes on, and we're ready to give this one a test. See if we brought it back from the trash, and uh, hopefully gave it a second chance. Well, there you go. Nice, very nice, very quiet reel. I want to make sure that the bail is twisting. 
it is. Very good. That's it. That's your Shakespeare SP400, and that's a kind of a, a servicing of how to on a reel that you're not that familiar with, but generally follows the, the laws of, of reels made before them. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you have a reel that needs to be serviced, I do service by mail, and I will be happy to provide you with the reel repair information. Uh, just send an email to the address on the business card that follows, and uh, I'll provide you that. So please, everybody, stay safe, stay well, and stay watching, and have a great day.